This is a 2019 Ford Expedition with an 8.8 .8 rear differential. This can also be found on the Mustangs, on the F-150 front diffs, and on some of the F-150 rear diffs that did not have a 9.75. So you can see we got a ton of metal here in this differential. We are working through this, trying to figure out which one of these bearings is our problem. Now, sometimes we will see bad carry bearings, but typically with the 889 set, any Ford diff, typically it's always a pinion bearing. So we're going to be sliding this carrier out. You can see this is what holds our ring gear. We slide this thing out and we will be able to access that pinion. You see me checking the bearings here on the ring gear. Both those look brand new. This is the part where you can hear what we were actually hearing going down the road. The pinion bearing in this thing is cooked, son, like Gordon Ramsay cooked. So at this point, we're going to remove this rear pinion yoke. This can be done with a puller and we can slide this off. You see the pinion just fell out on the table. There is our pinion and these all differ based upon what size gear ratio you have. This one I believe was a 355. See our actual problem. That is our bad pinion bearing. Here you can see the significant damage that was caused to the race of that outer pinion bearing. This is where all of our noise was coming from. This thing sounded like an airplane going down the road. So my method for removing carrier bearings probably a little different than yours. I don't like using a bearing splitter. I like to just cut them in half with a cutoff wheel and then I tap them off with a hammer. It's a little faster to me. It's just uh, it's just kind of how I've always done them. After uh, removing those inner races from the bearings, we can tap our new ones on here. I generally just do this with a hammer instead of a press because, you know, I don't like using a press when I can use my good old right arm strength on that hammer. When we are overhauling one of these rear diffs, typically we're going to replace everything. Ford sells these parts as a kit, so we replace the ring gear, pinion gear, both carrier bearings, and the pinion inner and outer bearings. We also do all the seals while we're there. We typically try to reuse the carrier because it's an expensive part that generally does not wear. So there was no, no issues with our spider gears or anything else. So there was really no reason to. Here you can see we are pressing the bearing off the pinion gear. That way we can get that shim off of it so we can put it on our new one. With Fords, uh, typically we can reuse the original pinion shim and it will put our pinion depth right where it needs to be. Now this is not the case with every differential and this always needs to be checked by running a pattern at the end to make sure that you don't need to do any adjusting on the pinion. One of the most crucial steps when setting up a differential is setting the pinion bearing preload. You can see I have zero inch pounds of pinion bearing preload. Here you can see me putting my torque multiplier on it to obtain the right amount of torque for this bearing. We're looking for 16 to 28 inch pounds and as you can see here we are right in the money. On the higher end is a little better in my opinion because bearings are going to wear in as you drive it. So we got about 27, 28 inch pounds on this pinion bearing preload so that's going to put us perfect. We're not going to have any noise or problems with these bearings as we go. At this point we're going to set our ring gear carrier back up in here. We're going to get it beat in. It needs to be tight that way we have good preload on the carrier bearings as well and then once we get that thing bolted in set up here we are going to install our dial indicator so that we can check our backlash. Backlash is another very important step when setting up a differential. You want to make sure that there's enough lash in between where the ring and pinion contact so that there's enough play in it. In the case of this differential we're going to be looking for about five to eleven thousandths on our backlash. You can see my dial indicator going on here. The same way we wanted our preload tight on the pinion bearings because things are going to roll in. I generally like this Try to set this up a little to the smaller side so we're looking for really about six to eight thousandths is generally why where i like to put them now at this point we're going to run a pattern you can see i got a little bit of my yellow mustard on here i'm going to roll that down up and i put a little bit much on here so you can't see super well but we did have a pretty good contact point for the pinion so i was happy enough with it so we decided to go ahead and run this thing so our last and final step before reinstalling this rear differential is to re-silicone this cover this is very very important to keep clean and make sure that you're getting a good seal here because you definitely don't want to have to reseal this thing down the road. My personal preferred method for silicone is always to smear it out and make a gasket with your finger. This is just the method that I've had the best success with. I'm not saying you have to do this. You can just run one small bead of silicone around, but this way I can make sure it is evenly applied and is contacting all the metal it needs to. So this is just kind of my personal opinion. I'm not telling you to do it like this, but I'm telling you that it works. This is how I do it and believe me I've done enough of them to know that they don't leak after this. Now we're going to reinstall this cover onto this diff. This is nice to be able to mount them up in the vise here 
and uh, work on them. That way you don't have to stand up, you know, be uh, up under the vehicle, always working above your head, like with a F-150 rear diff or something of that matter. But this is pretty much my process to rebuilding a rear or front differential. Any 88975 is going to pretty much be identical to this process. So if you are ever doing one yourself, maybe this helps you out. If, uh, if you ever need one rebuilt, uh, be sure to give us a holler. So that's pretty much going to wrap us up for this one. As always, I appreciate you guys watching and I will catch y'all in the next one.